Okay. Um, so, hi everyone, and welcome to, I guess, the uh, middle session for today, uh, Location Intelligence, um, you know, Best Practice. Um, and, you know, it's certainly going to be probably more of a high-level um, kind of best practice location intelligence um, session today. Um, James, who is in the audience, is our geospatial man. Anything really technical, I'm going to throw to him later on for the session. Um, but we're really going to try to, I guess, explain as best we can in terms of you know, where we see it being used, you know, some customer examples and what we see as, as best practice here. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Daniel Shaw Dennis. I look after uh, Emir for Yellowfin, um, and we'll be taking you through today's session. Um, so, what are we talking about when we um, are saying you know, location intelligence? And we're really, in this context, we're looking to integrate your location data and your spatial data within the context of your BI system. So, I know a lot of people here um, do have a lot of experience in geospatial technology, and we're really looking at um, in the context of BI here, because there are a number of different solutions um, in, the, in this space. So as I mentioned, we're going to you know, share some examples of, of customers and some that are here today. Um, you know, methods in Yellowfin at a high level in which we do this, um, and of course, kind of the best practice elements. Um, you've probably seen this stat a bit, and you saw it um, yesterday morning with Glenn, but a massive amount of data has a location element. If you look and drill into you know, your business, you can see it's such a huge amount of information has this, this, this uh, location element. And um, it's a whole raft of different things. Um, you've got things like you know, customer addresses, which is a, you know, quite a, a standard one. But then you've got, you know, where are my suppliers? You know, where are my, my stores? You know, where are they all in relation to each other? Um, you've got events um, that occur and, and where those events occur. Um, you've got you know, regions, you've got you know, state and suburbs and postcodes and, and the more standard kind of geospatial areas. But you've also got you know, potentially you know, organisation-based regional areas. You know, where's my, my sales territory? You know, where's my you know, marketing area? So you've got all this information uh, as well. And of course, you know, with the you know, smartphone, we've just got such a trove of new information coming through from these kind of you know, GPS-enabled uh, phones. I know that you know, you know, shopping centres you know, give you free Wi-Fi so they can actually track your movements throughout a centre. So you know, all this raft of information that we now have that we can look at it, and really every dollar that you spend or every dollar coming in does have a location element to it. I mean, if you can actually track that back and see where it's happening, it can be a very powerful tool uh, in your business. Um, so what does it help determine? What are, what are the key things that we want to look at? Um, one is certainly the size of the market and the share of the market. You know, what are the opportunities that exist there? You know, how big are my, uh, is, the, is the region? You know, what is my market share? You know, what are the key areas for growth? Um, you know, how does Melbourne compare to Sydney? What, what is the size there? Do I want to actually start a campaign in different regions? So really understanding what's around you uh, is part of that. Knowing the capacity in the market, you know, is this a, an area that I can go into? Can, should I focus on Sydney or is actually Darwin a, a hotter spot for, for this type of, my type of sales? So really understanding what's happening around you in a very clear and concise way. Um, where everything is and, and understanding the relationship between the two. I mean, where are my customers compared to where my, my stores are? Um, are my employees travelling a long way um, to get to um, you know, their place of work? So really understanding all those key elements with your data. And one of the, I guess, the, the key areas that we see location intelligence using in our customer base is marketing. So understanding demographics, understanding where can I target certain people, where are they, and how do I do that, and the impact of my, my, my BI information. So what are the, I guess, the type of benefits that we see, and what's the, what's the point um, in, in, in showing stuff? But I guess first and foremost, you know, we saw, I guess, in the example in, in 7.1, um, you know, we had that postcode information and the crime stats, and that was just, I think, a, a small subset of Victoria. But you can imagine looking at all of Australia and trying to locate, you know, the crime stats and trying to look at population and, and looking through reams and reams of data to try to find those hotspots. It's, it's a very hard task, if, if, if possible at all, versus seeing that on a map, understanding, you know, northern suburbs, I can see the crime there, I can see the hotspots around, you know, the, the key geographical areas, and seeing and visualising that straight away and be able to process and understand that. 
The second area um, I'm going to talk about is where information is not. And I think this is sometimes a, a, the most powerful tool with kind of geospatial and location intelligence. Understanding, you know, where are there gaps in the data? Where are there gaps from a sales opportunity perspective? You know, where are things happening so I can look at opportunities happening elsewhere? Where are the areas that I'm not performing well so I can really improve these things? And sometimes it's in, in the not that you get a lot of real value uh, in there. And you know, Robin, I guess, talked about this um, a little bit in terms of, I guess, uh, people processing animation um, and being able to see kind of changes over time and actually go, oh, I can see things are growing, I can see things are, things are shrinking, and understanding that and being able to process that more effectively. Um, so what are the analysts and what are those guys saying? So what we've got up there is um, Gartner's 2013 hype cycle. Um, and if you can have a look, you've got obviously the topic of big data, which is at the peak of inflated expectations, as you might imagine. You know, where are we using interface? All this stuff that's kind of really, you know, really inflated in terms of what it can do and how it can do it. But if you kind of go along this curve, you've got location intelligence in, I guess, what they've defined as that, that plateau of productivity. Now, I guess with Yellowfin, we've been, I guess, in that space for uh, quite a long time in terms of the features and functions that Yellowfin has. So we tend to probably see this a little bit sooner than I think the gardeners of the world, because a lot of our customers utilise um, the location features. But, you know, places like, you know, Ventana are saying, yeah, this is a key component um, to enterprise decision making. So in terms of, I guess, what the, the experts out there are saying, it is a, it is a key part, and you want to harness this um, to the best of your ability. It's quite an interesting curve um, in terms of what's there as well, if you have a spin in it. So what are some of the, I guess, industry examples that we've seen out there? Um, and, you know, I think we've shown a lot of things on crime, <laughs> I think, uh, for this session. And I think this is a good example of, um, you know, crime incidents, because it's a one that you can easily recognise, and, you know, red is a hot spot, and, um, like so. But what are some of the ways that, you know, we see, you know, our customers using, um, you know, geospatial information and location intelligence? So the first, I think, is from a transport and supply chain. So, you know, seeing, using distribution centres, looking at outlets, looking at, you know, routes of efficiency. Um, I used to work many moons ago at Adidas Australia, and um, IT was part of the uh, supply chain finance areas, as they sometimes roll into, and they were looking at, you know, opening new stores, um, getting, you know, LinkFox are doing all the delivery, where are my outlets, where are my centres, so I can understand what are my costs associated from getting point A to point B. What's the fastest route I can take and when I open up a new outlet, where should that be? Um, it's a really key thing and we see that across um, a lot of our supply chain customers. Insurance companies is another big one which you can you know, look at straight away. Understanding you know, customers and, and crime rates, so once again, we, we, it's, a, it's an easy one to associate with, but obviously you know, when you get your car insurance and you're you know, in one suburb versus my, my other suburb, it's going to be potentially a different rate because of crime rates in the area and the high risk that's associated with that. You know, looking at you know, weather patterns in far north Queensland, you're going to have a different from home insurance um, versus you know, somewhere in Melbourne where it's pretty much a stable weather environment. So use that information to drive pricing, to drive your market strategy as well, to understand what's happening so you know, the market could potentially be fairly addressed. But I guess say whether insurance companies fairly address the market or not. Higher education, um, which is another one. So if you saw um, Sebastian uh, Vaught's uh, presentation yesterday, um, they talked about, um, I guess, what he's going to do uh, regarding the university, and, and we have a, a number of university customers that use this in a way, looking at where are my students coming from, um, what are the demographics of students I can target for. Um, also, you know, government funding is a big part of universities, so understanding where can I get support from a, a transport link, and what are the current train and bus routes going to my university so I can drive that influx of students. Um, is some of the things that we, we generally see. So we're a couple of, uh, I guess, a couple of case studies, and I wanted to talk about, um, I guess, the ones that we have today. And, and um, Sebastian from, from Constance University was a, was a really good one because they started at a, at a no BI base and looking at, at this information to drive them. Um, a bit of background, they, they had basically information everywhere and they wanted to connect all the relevant data sources to provide kind of organisation-wide um, BI across the university. Um, and one of their big things was obviously student numbers and understanding where their students were coming from. 
Now, Constance is on the border of, um, you know, kind of uh, Switzerland and Germany, so it's in this corner, so you can see where a lot of the, I guess, the student activity was from. But then drilling into there and understanding what towns are coming from, uh, where other parts in Germany, where other parts of the world are they coming from, um, and looking at the next stage in terms of marketing campaigns. Gender equality is a big item that he mentioned and understanding, look, using this information to understand right, where are the, the, the women coming from from the student uh, population and where should we be marketing to and try to draw more women because that's one of our um, you know, key things that we're looking at for, for this year. Another really interesting case study, and I had a different idea, but I added this in last night because I just thought it was really interesting the way they were doing it, um, was the gym group in the UK. Now, just a bit of background of the gym group, they provide, um, we're all members of the gym, I think at some point, but their model is, I think $20 a month, all you can consume, no contract, no fees, free classes, and, it's, and they're growing at a, at a pretty big rate. Um, they've been a yellow thing since 2012, and they're, if you saw Ray's um, session in here, they're actually growing at a, at a pretty big rate too. But what I um, thought really, really interesting is the way that they try to market and attract members. So um, everything is, they know where their members come from because they're keen every time, so they understand where, they're, they're close, where they live. They understand where they work because often they go to the gym around their kind of working hours in the morning and evening. So they're looking on a map, you know, where are they living, where are they working, and saying, okay, if I've got this big hub of people coming in here and I've got a gym here, this is my next location. So understanding where their customers are to fit their needs. And also looking at what's the market doing around me. Part of their marketing or their, their, their growth campaign was to say, where are other gyms located near this customer base and I'm going to sit something next to there because we've got a, a better, more attractive model and we think we've got a better product. So we're going to compete directly over there. What was, I think, really interesting um, in terms of what they're going to do next is actually tracking what gym equipment you're using. So I can potentially you know, track automatically what I'm using. So you can think about, um, I guess, the, the layout of the gym, you know, the heat map and seeing where are the hot spots, which equipment's being used in the best way, which routes are my members taking to get from one station to the other, what are the highly used pieces of equipment that I can kind of see, where should they be located, and using that information uh, in the location intelligent point of view and that's the next stage of the project I'm kind of eager to get involved with that, that, that side of things um, from the Yellowfin perspective. So how do we do it in Yellowfin and I'm just going to talk as I said high level in terms of some of the methods we do um, do this in Yellowfin. Um, and the first I'll talk about is the raster map and raster maps assume I guess you don't have the traditional geo information um, and you really want to don't necessarily have a map as, as we know it in a sense but you want to use an image and, and tailor that to your organisation so looking at a floor plan understanding where, where people are um, one of the uh, uh, health organisations has a uh, human body understanding where are the key areas of disease and the thematic map uh, based on that so really thinking about um, what image makes the most sense and, and having that and using that um, you know, to, to drive business um, point is another one. So this is a uh, specific location, like a lat long. So it can be obviously a, a very specific address. Um, it can be a GPS location, um, and you can see that basically on a map. You can see that in this example, you can cluster that information, so you can see the grouping of those points. So really, trying to find that exact level of detail and, and get that single view uh, of the world. Heat maps, and obviously another one that we you know, showed yesterday, you know, understanding, I guess, density of information, once again using point, and understanding the spread of density. So when we saw, I guess, yesterday, if you were there, in terms of crime hotspots, but I mean, this is an example, of, assume it's crime, but hopefully it's not, um, of a sales area, and looking at where the, where the heat, where the key areas are, and where, you know, where the gaps are uh, as well. Next is you know, polygons. So these are shapes or shape files. So you know, this polygon shape of Australia is a whole lot of um, points made up to make up that shape. And obviously I can see it on a map so I can know the context of it all. But another way that we can kind of see kind of high level information and, and, and drill down and, and get to lower level um, shaped information as well. And lastly, I guess, you know, the animation and, and time lapse. And from a yellow thing perspective, it's we look at this just, just through time. Um, so I can see, you know, what are my sales results from kind of 08 
to, uh, to 10. I mean, which, I might colour code um, my products in a certain colour to see which products are exploding across um, America and, and things like that. So understanding the flow of time. Um, you know, call centre rates is a good one. Understanding which calls are being logged, which are being actioned. I can see that in a 15 minute kind of window potentially uh, as well. So what are, I guess, you know, some of the kind of best practices uh, in this regard that, that we see? First and foremost, I mean, you've got to essentially kind of geo your data. Um, and this might be, you know, post, uh, you know, points, postcode, country. You've got to have the information in there that you need. And it's not a case of trying to get everything. And I had a few people ask around, you know, what, what should we do? It's really understanding, you know, what is going to be right for your business? What level of reporting do you want to give your customers or your users? And then getting the right fit for that. You know, what is the level of granularity that you need? Do you only need to look at country level? Do you don't need to go down to street level? You, know, you don't necessarily need to provide that information. So just thinking about what are the questions that your customers are asking, your users are asking, and, and ensuring that it fits that, um, those questions. Um, where can you get this information? And you know, it's, as you can see, seven point one does have a whole raft of, of, of geospatial information, um, and which is I think is going to only increase over time. Um, of course, we don't have everything. Um, you know, Google is a, a good place if you just wanted to clean up your data. A few lat longs, you can kind of plug it into Google and give it to you. Um, also, I guess for specific information, um, you know, government and, and council, I know in Australia, do have a lot of this information. Victoria in particular um, has a lot of this information readily available. So depending on what you want, you can bring it into your system, link it up and, and use it uh, accordingly. Multiple layers. This is another, I guess, best practice to really, I guess, try to find, you know, context around your data. Um, once again, you know, sort of yesterday in terms of looking at where is my crime incidence, what's the population, what is the effect on a population on crime. Really using those layers to provide greater insight to what, you, what you're there. You know, adding that depth and context, you know, correlating that information, you know, where are my stores, okay, where are my customers, I can see the impact, I can see the congregations around different areas. And understanding, I guess, the, and seeing patterns across there, and that's what you really want to find out, patterns in the, in the data. So you can fill in those, those blanks as well. And I think obviously yellow thing, we do have multiple layers and you can add many, many in depending on, on what you want to see, but you obviously want to make it suit the purpose of what you're trying to do. Background maps for context. So you can imagine, I guess, looking at this map, uh, looking at this, this data and I think it's you know, sales information across um, you know, certain you know, key areas and not having any background map wouldn't make much sense. So really thinking about um, adding that context to the, the data that you have. Now, I obviously mentioned the new version, we've got um, background map, but it's not just about putting the shape of the US or putting the shape of Australia, it's thinking about, once again, what do you want to provide your end users and providing the context around that. So I guess what I mean by that is, you know, thinking about um, what are the key things I want to see. So university, where, where are the, uh, you know, the capital cities, what's the transport routes that are coming through. If I'm setting up a, you know, a surf shop or a fishing shop, do I want to be around lakes or I want to be around the water? Understanding that terrain and adding that in so I know what the impact of the lakes around my fishing spots. I want to target little, you know, tackle shops around here. You know, I'm setting up camel rides in the desert. I want to be, lo be located in those areas because that's when I'm going to get the most throughput. So not just you know, sticking your background, but just thinking about the context of that data that's going to provide extra value. Um, once again, you know, um, from a yellow perspective, you've got um, you know, Google Maps, which, which obviously uh, is the standard in terms of kind of background mapping. But you've got other layers, um, like an Esri or map info, you've got other layers you can actually add in there depending on, on the type of context that you want to give your data. Uh, and of course, 7.1, which I won't talk about too much. Um, so I mentioned this earlier, but really thinking about going beyond the traditional map. And, and it's not just doing it for doing its sake, but once again, having the context of, of your data. So really thinking about what's going to make the most sense for your business. So 
for example, you know, we might see a warehouse in stock level so I can understand where stock is arisen. I can understand if I'm you know, losing room, I've got nothing on these shelves, I can allocate that information because I can see it on a map, I know where it is, I know the levels. Floor plan is a, is a, is a, a big one that we see around there and understanding you know, universities, which, which faculties are seeing the most, which has the most students, which have you know, the right auditoriums for size and all this information that go beyond a traditional map. Um, and really, I so said, thinking about your business, thinking about you know, what makes sense in the context and adding that image in and, and making it make sense um, from that perspective. Combining mapping um, with analysis, and I think this is really, I guess, using the, the power of BI and combining that in the right way. Um, you want to potentially give, I guess, that flexibility and allow, I guess, your users and customers to ask questions of that data. So looking to, you know, combine that um, you know, with filters, give them the option to look at demographics, let me drill down into my information. Um, combining that with um, reports, often um, when we get organisations that um, have come from potentially an Excel background um, and want to provide these really kind of whiz-bang analytics and information to their users through the yellow thing, um, they see a map and they go, oh, look, it might be a bit too much. I, you know, I, I, my users might get a bit scared by that. So potentially you know, combining that, so saying, look, let's, let's use that as an overview to give them an insight as to what's happening and combine that with you know, their traditional data on a dashboard so that it's, it's an easy kind of transition to, to getting used to seeing the key information on a map as opposed to going through rooms of information. So really wanting to use the Power BI data and combine that um, in the right way in a mapping context. Um, using location um, to drive your data. This is another one, uh, I guess, yeah, from the customers that I'm used to. And using this information to really drive where are the key points that I want to focus on. So it might be looking at a hotspot on a map and being able to really drill into that information um, so I can get down and see why something's occurring. Using this map to drive the action as opposed to going through graphs of reports. And once again, this is a good one when starting out in, in a geospatial environment. You know, having used, look at a map, drill down to a suburb in Victoria, oh, I understand, and looking at 10 rows of data as opposed to you know, getting through a thousand to get to that eventually. So using this information to really drive your data and, and I guess providing a smaller subset to deal with and being more focused. So it potentially being a more efficient way to get to the information that you need. Going where I guess you know no data uh, has gone before, and I think um, this is a, the real power of, of, of location intelligence, and basically trying to think about you know where are the gaps, and you know where we see this being used. I think the strongest way is really understanding where the knot is. Um, you know, particularly in a, in a sales environment, understanding you know where everything is, where are sales occurring, how can I really target this? You know, which demographics are performing well, which ones aren't, and how can I then really focus on these areas? So the not is a real key component uh, of this. And you can think about all the information that you've got, where gaps are, and, and it, it, seeing that on a map finds you know, some, some real value um, to basically like, get to what you need again. I think thinking about the not is, is, a, is a really big part of kind of making it work. So that's kind of what I wanted to really kind of touch on um, from a high level perspective uh, in terms of kind of the best practice for LI. Um, obviously, you know, with, with 7.1, we try to add more and more information to this and, and using, I guess, combining that key information to provide further depth and further information to your geospatial uh, data. So getting, I guess, your guys' feedback on the data release, how we can get that even stronger to provide more insight is really kind of critical to the next couple of months. So it'd be great to get your feedback on that. So with that, are there any questions? I'm um, drilling down on uh, maps. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, yeah, when you drill down, you're basically applying a filter um, at that level. And James, tell me if I'm telling you the wrong thing, but you are kind of essentially, if I go from Victoria to um, the city of Melbourne, I'm filtering down in that smaller subset of data as I drill down. So you're calling that data at the time? Yes, I believe so. James, am I not all that? I thought so. <laughs>